Okay, so I'm going to make a YouTube view counter. So this will be a standalone bit of hardware that you can just plug into power and then it'll go on the internet and it will display the amount of views on the YouTube video. Um, you could make it view all kinds of different things like website stats um, or YouTube channel stats. Basically anything you can use the Google API for, you can get this really easily. Or in fact, anything that returns data in a JSON format. So I've got here a Mac 7219 display. This is um, an eight by 32 LED matrix and it's got four of these Mac 7219 chips chained end to end. And all you need is five wires for it. All I've done is connected this to an Esprino Wi-Fi board. Um, so you've got VCC, I've connected to 3.3 volts. Um, GND, I've connected to 0 volts. DIN, I've connected to pin B3, CS to B4, and CLK to B5. The only thing to watch out for here is that the way the ribbon cable they give you is um, the color codes for VCC and ground will be really confusing. Um, so just remember you don't accidentally connect it up backwards. So now that's on, um, I've got this code here, which I've got from the um, Mac 7219 page here. Um, so it's under the uh, information for chained 7219s. And I've basically just copied that and I've changed the pins around. Uh, here I'm using software SPI rather than hardware SPI, just because it's easier and you don't have to worry about what pins you use. So if I upload this, um, nothing happens because I'm not displaying anything on the screen. So if I say g.drawString, uh, this will come with the smallest font by default. But if I say hello, and then I say g.flip, it will send that straight to the screen and it's quite bright. So the next step is to actually get the information we want to um, want to display. Um, we can do that using um, something like this. This is a Google API's API call. Um, so it looks on YouTube at the videos, wants the statistics, and then you want the ID. And the ID is that little bit from the end of the YouTube video URL. So if I do this, it's gonna fail at the moment because um, you need an API key for it, but that's easy as long as you've got a Google account. So you go to this URL that it's saying, um, and depending where you are, it'll go to different pages, but if you go to credentials, create, um, yeah, I want a new project, and you agree, um, hopefully in a second, we'll be able to um, get to a page where we can actually create the key that we need work okay great create credentials and we want an API key so it's creating API key and it gives us this so that's fine we can just do that and click close and all we need now is to put right on the end of this and key equals the key that you've used and now it's going to say that it's not configured so again we need to actually um, copy this URL and go to this URL And then we will be able to say uh, enable. Now this can take a few minutes to kind of trickle through. So um, occasionally, we'll, we'll leave it a little bit first. So that's all enabled. All we need to do now is to worry about how to use the Esprino Wi-Fi. Now the reason we're using Esprino Wi-Fi here is because you need to use HTTPS, um, which is uh, secure HTTP when you're making requests. And that can be kind of, that can be really difficult, if not impossible to do on some other boards like the um, like the normal Arduino boards. So first off, we're just gonna use the Wi-Fi example from, um, from Esprino. I'm going to um, put in my really helpful um, Wi-Fi credentials here. Uh, and then we need to do the get page function, which is in here. So if I um, have a look at this API now, it's, it's now working and it's displaying things like the view count and all, all that kind of stuff. Um, so if I take this actual URL and I stick this in here um, and then I think everything's ready, if I upload and then I say on init, which will kick this all off 
we can see the blue LED flashing a little bit there for the, um, the Wi-Fi status. Uh, so hopefully soon it will stay connected and then it will try and request a web page and we'll see that um, it's, it's given us the headers and it's also given us our whole response here. Now, um, we may not get this in one big block, so we really want to save all the data and then handle it in one go. But that's easy enough. Um, so we will create a variable here called data. Um, we'll make it equal to an empty string. And then when we get more data, we'll say data plus equals D. So we'll just add data onto the end of it. And now we just want to do something when the, um, when the connection closes. Now we know we've got all our data. So all we have to do is to pass that JSON. Uh, you could extract the string, but um, JSON.pass is kind of, uh, um, it'll let you get at all the different bits of data far more easily. Um, and now, if we um, try and write the, uh, the actual item that we found. So in here, it was, um, we want the JSON variable dot items and it's an array with one item dot statistics dot view count. Oops. Don't want that. Okay. Um, so if I just replace that function and then I call it again, um, so it's still plotted the response. We can actually get rid of that because we don't care about it. But it's actually given us a view count here. So we know that that's. Um, that's that's correct. So if we um, create another function called I don't know um, update count, and all you need to do is um, is draw it onto the screen. First, we'll clear it so that we get rid of ev ev anything that's there before. We'll say draw string count, whoops, and then we'll say flip. So we'll change console.log for that, and we'll basically take that and put it in. Um, and it's appeared. Now this is obviously a really small font. Um, we can use a much bigger font. So all we have to do for that is to look up on the Espino site on the fonts page. Uh, and you've got different fonts that you can choose here. Um, the one we want really is the eight pixel deep font here, font six by eight. So all we really have to do is to take this um, in fact, we only need that bit of code, and we'll um, we'll poke it in here. So, G's already initialized. All we actually need is this bit, and we'll change font eight by twelve to font six by eight, because that was the one we knew we needed. So um, now I'll have to re-upload this because uh, this is a module that has to be loaded off the internet. So all sent. Then we don't say save, sorry, we say on init to kick it all off. And we have to wait for a little bit for it to connect and for it to get the page. And I'll just make sure this is fully on the screen. So you'll probably find that for a lot of videos um, with a decent amount of views, this will be completely off the page. As, as we are, this is actually fine because it was, um, what did we work out it was before? It was like 800,000. And you'll see that the view count's actually gone up since last time. So um, suppose your video is amazingly popular and you wanted, um, you wanted to display more. You could actually just buy another one of these displays and chain them end to end. And all you'd have to do is change that 32 to 64 and change that four there to eight. And it would, would just chain straight on. Um, otherwise, you could use a smaller font or you could even animate it. So this by itself um, is kind of fun and we can make it update just by calling get page um, whenever we want, want it to update. Um, so we can do that in a set interval. But if I do it now, hopefully we'll find that the view count's gone up. What we might also want to do is to, um, is to actually make this increment. Okay, so I've just made a few small changes here. I have um, changed draw count so that it's right aligned so that we can actually see the units on here. Um, and I've modified update count so that um, it will now, instead of just drawing the value, which was basically this bit before, 
it will now smoothly update so it will count up so that hopefully based on the average figure it's um, it's what your views will actually be uh, and the reason for this is that you can't um, you can't generally call this get page function every second because first off YouTube doesn't update its stats every second and um, also there's a rate limiting um, which is on the Google API so you can't keep calling them really often or it will just ban you so unfortunately the um, the stats for this this video aren't actually going up. Uh, I've, I've checked over the last few minutes, and it's not really happening. So what I've done is I've disabled this line here, which would have caused it to get more stats every 60 seconds. And um, I'll just call it manually. So if you want to update the statistics, um, let's, let's have a look at what they currently are. Okay, and if I, um, if I put that in, and then just add like, maybe okay that's 60 views to it so now it'll go up it'll start going to the thing immediately but once a second it will change its view number to count up so you get this really nice real-time view here um you know ideally would have all those views um on the screen itself um if your videos are anything like mine you're not going to hit that in a hurry um as i said before you can actually make this bigger or in fact you can um you can use something like this, which will obviously store a much bigger number of views, but it's not a very big display and it's not that nice. Uh, the other option is to use a much thinner font, which also wouldn't be too hard to do. So um, that's it. Yeah, I hope you like this video. Um, if you're interested in implementing this yourself, check out the Espino Wi-Fi page. It's, uh, it'll be linked at the bottom of this video, as well as all the example code that I've got here. Um, the Espino Wi-Fi really is one of the simplest ways of accessing HTTPS websites right now. Um, so yeah, this is, is really nice and easy. Um, also, please subscribe for more fun videos a bit like this. Um, I'm going to be trying and knocking out quite a few more soon. Thanks for watching.